I don't know. No, I'm just. I I've always told everyone I'm terrible at names. I don't know why you keep on thinking I know everything. So if you don't, I just I just tell me their names. Well, he's doing the actual. Uh, He's doing all the press junkets. He's a show run, runner for Mark. Uh, oh, he's just a show runner? Yeah, the defense show runner is Mark Ramirez. Oh, okay. And he talks about um, the whole situation regarding about everything that was going on. He also left, uh, How was the? what was the biggest challenge having all of them put together in one? And he says it was the tonal difference between all the previous shows. They were so vast. I mean, we got one where it was a, yeah. the ghetto theme, but it right. was like, that's Luke Cage, and we got Daredevil, where it's just dark, and he just beats the shit out of everybody. And then we got Jessica Jones, who's just, I don't know, you think her life's just falling apart. Well, Jessica Jones is very different from Luke Cage, which is very different from Iron Fish, which is very different from Daredevil. When you have to think about combining these in some dish, well, it kind of feels like, wait a second, what's going on? But what the writers realized and the directors realized, and I realized, and this is from Marco, while I was running it, the problem of the show is the key to entering the show. Okay, so starting it, starting getting it, it going is fine. Part. It doesn't make sense that Jessica Jones and Danny Rand are sitting at the same table or dinner table. She should hear his right. story and say, that doesn't make any sense. Or Chi is bullshit. Think about that. And she, You know, because would Jessica go with Chi? Like, you should find your Chi. Oh, find your Chi. Yeah, yeah, she would be punched because, what are you talking about, you idiot? She's not into that. Yeah. And you know what? Like, if you put down Defenders, like on Instagram, there's only like 145,000 posts. <laughs> um, and not all related to it. So there's not that much. It's not that much talk. buzz on Defenders. I mean, you know, I'll go on Twitter in a minute, but like, I'm just considering it just came the, out. The reviews weren't that, that kind to it. So, no, and but you know, I'm and, not going to hold that until I see it. No, and, but at the same time, too. It is possible to mush everyone together. I'm not saying the Avengers were, look how good, and we'll see how Justice League ends up, Mm -hmm. right? But that's a beautiful story, right? That's that's, um, pretty much every family, every company team, every subgroup, every basketball team. It's just how well you write it. And unless studios invest more on great writers and not dictate really mm-hmm. basic line, fast producing ones, you're not going to get good quality. All right. We got to get into a quick interview because his runs a little longer. I'm talking about the world famous face from the A team, and he is also from Battlestar Galactica. Played in a movie I love when I was a kid. Face, called, you can't have my sister. It's called, I got to tell you something about Dirk Benedict, the guy. <gasps> he hits on Jerry with, Lewis died. Jerry Lewis died today? I I think I just read that. Jerry All right, we'll look at that died. in a second. Let's. Th- I don't need any more of this stuff. I There's already so lost. so many people die, right? It, but it, Gray. It just, oh, oh, my God. All right, let's get into Dirk Benedict, and then we'll come back and see what happened to Jerry Lewis. We t- recently talked to him at a Comic-Con while he's hitting on people, and I'm trying to get his attention. Chick, listen to this. Because I know I shouldn't give this away. What's in this for me? And whatever you want. I well, played a con- I not, You know, I man. was that character on, on TV, the con man. Never seen Space Man on the A team. He always seen, wanted money for it. Never, well, I'm just never like seen that. You've never yeah. seen never it? seen these shows. No, I don't even. I've never even seen them. Neither you the don't know star. who I used to be. Yeah, you were Mr. T, weren't you? No, no, no. I in my dreams I was. You know, okay. I wish I was Mr. T today. All right, I'd anybody, still have a career. Anybody doesn't know I'm. I wish Hane, I was. Uh, who could I Dirk be? Dirk Benedict. Richard Dean Anderson. No, I don't no, want to be, be him. No. You don't. You don't. No sense of humor. Okay, over there. That, that's my wife over there. Yeah, she, I know. She I know. Lo- she and I. She knows who I am. She, she loves you. She, I've known movie. her for quite a while now. Yeah, because she loves your movie with your shirt off. Did she? She's not that old. Your what? wife is old enough to remember. We used to she watch cannot channel, remember that. Watch it on Channel 2 all the time in San Francisco, KTVU, and yeah. they used to repeat it over and over again. Well, I took my shirt off every chance I had. <laughs> Actually, I didn't. I hated taking my shirt off. Why? Because it's it's like when I did, because it's too, anybody can take their shirt off. It's like, it's like Daniel Craig coming out of the water in a Speedo. It's so stupid. It's like, oh, I want to be sexy, so I'll get naked. But you were no, a sex No, I was icon. sexy but with my clothes on, or I wasn't sexy with my clothes on. Okay. Besides, I'm much better with my clothes <laughs> on. Than, no, I, I should have taken them off when I was young. I had a very beautiful body, but I didn't. And I would do movies. They said, we want you to, we want you to. I said, no, no. It's like when I did the A-Team. They had me in this stupid, sexy black leather jacket with the collar turned up. Oh, and, I, I, and then we became number one, and I refused to wear it. And I got myself dressed like this. I like that. Let me hold it up so the people on radio can see it. 
Hey, what yeah, do you think you of this? this? Look down at yeah. you. Yeah. How that, does, uh, with how this. Do, who made I did, did I you approve this? this? Uh huh. Did you approve this? Frank? Yeah. Yeah. You look better than you do the no, doll. I look like John Travolta. <laughs> I think they ran out. They had the extra. No, who does that look like? It looks like somebody. It looks like uh, all TV stars today look like that. Um, no, who is that character? Oh, I know who it is. Not Mark Wahlberg, but uh, yes. Who's the guy that did the movie with Jude Law, where he played the crazy, the friend, the befriended Gwyneth Paltrow was the wife. That's that's that's, uh, that's Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, that's I look like Mark Wahlberg. There, that eager smile. I, you know, I, I love know. me, love me, love I, me. I, I'm really a nice guy. Love me, love me, love so me. So, did you prove this? Now, right now, we're looking I, at the I 18. Approve, well, the crotch is padded. <laughs> see? Of course. Okay, real That's fast. All I, I cared I, about. I said, when my action figures come out, <laughs> make sure the crotch is padded. All right, I am talking to Dirk Benedict, and if you guys don't know who he is, and you got to be an then, idiot, then, Battlestar Galactica, <laughs> motion pictures, the face I, from yeah, the One of my favorite movies. There's a guy here who's just a big fan of it called Body Slam. Okay. So people go out and get that body. It's a wrestling movie. Hal Needham directed it. The guy did Smoking the Bandit. Yeah. And I did a movie with Ben Johnson and Linda Blair and Richard yeah. called Ruckus. Yeah. And then the snake movie, Ruckus. And I did I did, I did, did a lot of movies, actually. They were, you know, I did uh, a movie called Tattoo. It's called something else. I with, with, uh, and I did the film with Patsy Kenza in Italy. So what did you like better, television or movies? What? Television or movies? Which one? I like real life better than either one. So, so you didn't like any of them at all? Actually, I like the theater better. I started in the stage. I, I was on that. Broadway and mm-hmm. did all that. And all of Hollywood was an accident. It just, I... Was on my way well, back to New York. You were originally a football player. You played football. I was. And it was a dare was. to go do stuff on stage, correct? And then I found out you could get hurt playing football. And you I can said, get hurt acting, oh, too. Oh, man. Well, only psychically. You can have your psyche destroyed. Most of them <laughs> do. Why do you think they do drugs? Why do you think they're all drunks? Why do you think they all die from pancreatic cancer? Yeah. Booze. Booze and drugs. Anything to deal with the stress and anxiety. Any actor that becomes a success, I say, I don't. They should make a hundred million dollars. It's so difficult and so hard. It's all so, luck, isn't it? It's a lot not of all it's luck. luck. It's, per, right it's place, not all luck. Because I remember, I it, heard it, your it's stories. Not talent. You're it, always leaving town, going back to Montana. And every time you're going back to Montana, your agent calls you and goes, "I know you weren't going to get the part, but you got the part." So isn't that luck a little no, bit? No, that's not quite true. Who said that? You did. I was. Well, watching, I always I, knew if I left town, <laughs> I would get a job. <laughs> Of course, saying I'm out of town, so I couldn't do the job. But you're I had my agent would call me and say, "Where the hell have you?" He would go ballistic, because I would disappear. I don't know, and I finally did totally disappear. I, I you know, I've always been a, a I had a paradoxical a, a relationship with the whole thing. So I got what I deserved. My career disappeared because I didn't water it. I didn't pay attention to it. I didn't want it bad enough. George Roy Hill was a friend of mine. George Roy Hill, okay. Butch Cassidy and Sunday. And I used to hang out at his house with Bob and Paul okay. and some of the boys. He said to me one night, after this is after a party where Newman and Redford are there, he says, no, you're never going to be a, TV, a movie star. And I was at the time a Broadway star, and I had done the Snake movie yeah. with Strether Martin. And, and I love that movie. And Strether and I became friends, and Strether was friends with all that crowd because yeah. of the movies he made. I said, why, why, George? He says, because you don't want it bad enough. You don't want it bad enough. So let me ask you a question, and we're going to go back. I want her bad enough. See that girl over there? (laughs) I want her bad enough. My God. No, I'm joking. I want to know about the story about cigars. Did did ABC, NBC really not want you to smoke cigars? I've heard some stories about this. No, they didn't. Of course not. Who's smoking cigars on TV today? Because that's... How many... I'm sorry, I forget. Oh, yeah, cigars are really popular now. But you Oh, yeah. I was the last... Freaking guy! In westerns, they smoked them all the time. They, don't, they, they hated anything it. masculine. Are you kidding? <sighs> what did they do to the show when they remade it? Oh, they put a woman in there, right, which is horrible. Right. The show. I wrote an article. Look, about I'm gonna, it's I read it's it. It's garbage, lost in castration. It's the about, new Battlestar Galactica. I'm going to tell you this, and so, I'm saying so. Now she could smoke, it but sucked. <laughs> I didn't like. Well, it at it's, all. it's 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 if you like. And I heard they were going to put you in it, weren't they? For a if while. If you're a woman who likes men, uh-huh. likes. A, then you wouldn't like the new Starbuck. No. Because she wasn't masculine, really. I think she played. She had a lesbian relationship. Yeah, something like that with well, a robot. They, well, I don't know. Well, that's the new world we live in. I wake up and smell the transgenderism. I mean, this the world is, this is the new world. You cannot remake Battlestar Galactic the way it was. You cannot have Starbuck out there 
trying to get laid in every galaxy he's in. That's a chauvinist And that's pig. why we liked him so exactly. much. Starbucks this is why it's smoked, all, gambled, and was a women. That's why it's all fraudulent. It goes against human nature. All this political correctness yeah. goes against human nature. And yet, I'm in San Francisco. for I'm in California, which is run by this insanity. Yeah. So, of course, they wanted to fire him. He said, one more cigar, and he's fired. Jeez. They, they hated it. I love we And, um, and fortunately, the only we reason, you only reason the I got to smoke is the show Did came smoke. on the air, and all the ladies sent me cigars. Because yeah. their argument was that women hate cigars, and we want Derek's character to appeal to the <laughs> girls. And if he's smoking, they won't like it, and they won't watch I our show. I want to put you in a movie right oh, now. Please. The stupidity okay, so of it. Were you happy the stupidity with the... of it was overwhelming for me. It was. I used to. It's amazing. I didn't become a drunk. You know, I meditated. And you still I used in Montana, to run. Right? I was an addicted to running. I would run to battle to Universal Studios, like, I would. It would take me two hours to run this studio, and then I would work all day, and I would spend a couple yeah. of days there in my trailer, and then I'd run home when I got. Just right. to stay sane. All right, real fast, we're talking to Dirk I was Benedict. Hated the ABC <laughs> didn't want okay. me in the show, you know. They refused to hire me. Yeah. Glenn Larson wrote it for us. So they hated me from the beginning. They refused. They said I wasn't sexy enough. And then Frank Price, it was the head of ABC yeah. at the University, said, What? What? I want a meeting with the people that were at I, I know their names. I'm not going to mention them because somebody might actually listen to this. <laughs> and I got enough troubles in my life. But no, and he don't. said, what, "What's the problem with this actor? Because I'd done five or four or five screen yeah. tests, and and the female casting director for ABC stands and went, we just don't feel he's sexy enough.' And then, and the guy started. He says, "Listen, you so and so, we're going to hire this actor. If you don't like it, we'll take the show to a different network." And walked out of the room. And that's the only way I got yeah. the job. And that doesn't happen. Let's let, let's transition to the A team real fast. Aren't Re- you glad you Aren't you glad you brought that I, up? I'm so glad I did. I heard about this. The A team. Were you happy with the casting of the A team? Oh yeah, it was that was the secret of the success. So you like that? The secret of the success of the show was George Papard and Mr. T and Dwight and I were perfect. But did you like Perfect. the new casting for the new movie? Oh, the new movie. No, no. It wasn't the A team. It was, once again, and for different reasons. But, come on. Liam Neeson yeah, has got I, okay, about that much was, twinkle that was, that was, as a dead fish. Yeah, that's, he should He's do He's wonderful movies. doing those, you know, intense things. He is not, I mean, it's like they never watched the sh- They didn't. Liam said, he never seen the A team. And he, 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 he said... I was in. I was in. I was touring England. Well, why don't you playing, have your own political I was show? Playing, this guy needs a I show. Was playing, <laughs> I I'm listening to you. Go, go, go. I was I'm playing listening. Columbo. Yeah, Lieutenant Columbo on stage in yeah. UK, United Kingdom, for six months. Got rave reviews. Uh, if they ever, they said, if they ever redo Columbo, this guy ought to play him. I'm doing that. I read an interview with Liam Neeson. This was in 2010 when the A Team came out, uh-huh. and he said, asked him about playing Hannibal Smith. You know, he says, well, I never watched the show. He said, but. We took all. He's talking about the multi-layered levels of his character. <laughs> well, in the TV show, we were all one, we were all one-dimensional. If you, in case you didn't notice, yeah. we were a cartoon show. Yeah. I can, you know. But the, the number one rated cartoon show for Face the Man was a con man who Everyone. wanted to get laid. Yeah. Hannibal was a crazy guy who was the leader. Mm-hmm. PA was the muscle who had a, a golden heart. Dwight was crazy, but was a, and that was it. It wasn't. There were no yeah. layers. There was no mother. We were. This is why the kids loved us. It was nothing to figure out. But Liam gave it multi-level, and we took. This is his words. We took all the corniness out. Oh, you took the corniness out. Yeah. Good, Liam. That's like really it. good. It's like hey, we took, took the corn out of cornflakes. Uh, we uh, took the sugar out of donuts. I don't. I don't know. I, I got to ask you this. You had stories about Fred Astaire. There were. Um, can you talk about those? Yes I no? got stories about Fred Astaire, but we'd have to do a whole other show. Can you I do adore Jack Fred Warren Astaire. Too? Fred Astaire is one of the five most important people in my life, so I can't I can't share it with you because you mean nothing <laughs> to me, pal. You so don't deserve you, Fred so Astaire. Fred Astaire, you don't. You're on your knees, but you don't deserve Fred. <laughs> All right, Send I, me a bottle of Lagavulin, a 16-year-old Lagavulin scotch, and then maybe. No, uh, Fred is no. The truth is, I don't have time. Okay, but I he is Fred Astaire. And why, why was a very you, gentle man, a very sweet the, man, a very humble man, and I know you and a very with funny. And, and, he, and I learned a lot. We we were peas in a pod. He played my father, but he he we we were very similar. Uh, and I he know. loved the ladies. He had a thirty six year old girlfriend at the time. You know, wow. she was a she was a he, jockey. Sure he Robin Robinson. He was crazy about her. <laughs> and we both played the piano. You know, he's a piano. We both played the piano. 
He said, he told me it's the only thing that matters to him in life, which is.